I'm Chris Edwards with Tennis Warehouse and I'm with Heads Dennis Fabian. He's head of the Head Stringing Room here at the BNP Paribas Open. And he is gonna take us through a racket's journey as it travels through the stringing room here and gets ready to be hit. So Dennis, tell us what racket we've got and what string we're gonna put in. Thanks Chris. So we just received a brand new gravity racket and uh, we will restring it with a brand new Hawk Power string. So like a full new 2023 setup that we're gonna get to the guys here in the stringing room. Awesome, well let's give you the racket's view as it heads through the stringing room. As you can see, we've mounted a camera to the racket so you get the racket's view. Dennis, what's the first step here? Yeah, so a uh, player walks in usually and uh, they have their strings with them. They bring the racket, they talk to the team here at the front desk and then they drop off the racket basically. They, they uh, get questions asked about the tension for sure, if they do any pre-stretch. Uh, when the racket needs to be ready to be picked up. So all the logos and stenciling, what needs to go on, like whether it's just a racket brand or is there an additional string brand logo that needs to be attached, so the color of the logo. So all the details, which is usually just the first time. And then it's like saved in our system. So, And then usually if players bring it again, they, they tell us, yeah, same as last time, just change attention, stuff like that. Yeah. Right, so then we drop, drop it off here take it to autumn and then it gets carried over to the center of the stringing room yep. to be strung out, uh, cut out the string and then it will be handed over to the uh, stringer to be strung. So once the strings are cut out of the racket, it gets handed over to the racket stringer. Yep. So he's going to mount it properly into, into the machine. So you see the, the top of the racket is uh, shown on, on the machine and the, the bottom of the racket, the throat area. So usually you like tie it in on the six and 12 o'clock. Like a tip to stringers out there, like don't pull these too tight from the very beginning. The, the racket should what we call breathe while stringing because you, you apply first the, the main strings and the racket will condense. So it has to breathe. So like if stringers at home or somewhere in shops pull this too tight, like there is a chance of damages to the frame. This starting process is what every stringer does in the stringing room. So what we do is like we, we pull against the, the clamp, but we put the starting clamp behind that clamp. So if, if the string would move, we would know as a stringer that we adjust, we have to adjust the uh, clamp. Do you have to clean the clamps yes, during like the tournament? Pretty much every evening or during the day, depending on which strings are strung on the racket. Uh, the stringers take care that the machines are clean, the clamps are clean. <clears throat> As you know, like some, some strings, they have a coating and everything. So um, that's where you want to take care of and, and not have the clamps like be slippery. It's, it's quite important um, because what you don't want the string to, it shouldn't slip and the clamp shouldn't really clamp the, the, or squeeze the string. It should hold the string, but it shouldn't squeeze it. And like a good quality string uh, service or a good quality string job you get, is that you see that the clamps are properly adjusted. So there's no indentations on the string or anything like that? Sometimes on multifilament, like you can't avoid it because of the like the resin system and stuff. It's so sensitive that mm -hmm. if you clamp it, there will be some marks to be seen, but this is only like the inside that changes, but it shouldn't be clamped and ditches on it or anything that's burned. Like obviously different now stringing on camera. So in general, like we, we uh, the stringers always try to have like consistent distance of the clamp towards the frame to make to make sure that like the the um, the tension gets applied to every string in the same way and also like the overall string bed stiffness towards the, the end is, is always the same so if, if we get let's say four of those rackets um, that every single racket if they get strung with the same tension they do have the same um, string bed stiffness and with these guys and that that's where like everything comes into play on, on a good string service and on a good stringer. Racket one has the same quality as racket 35 or 40 at the end of the day. Um, and, and that's what players rely on. Because they don't want to go on court and all of a sudden like a 50 pounds feels like 48 pounds and the next 50 pounds feel like 52 pounds. So we usually also assign a stringer to a player. So that's something that the front desk is managing. So you look at the draw or potential draw seedings and stuff, so that if you get to quarterfinal, semifinals, that you don't have like um, opponents 
on one on the same machine with the same stringer because if there would be on cord stringing or anything it could cause trouble you Got know? It. so you have because, to pay close attention to the draw when yes. you're assigning out the strings yes. interesting so that that's the the uh, main job for example as well of, of the front desk people so that they really have an eye on like the stringers they balance it out also in terms of the workload so it's not just taking the racket putting stickers on <laughs> like the other thing that, that people at the front desk do, or also in the center where you have seen where the strings get cut out, they usually check every single racket that comes in for cracks or bad grommets so that we can advise the player and say, hey, here's like a, a crack in your frame. Do you really want it to be restrung? Or here are grommets that are damaged. Are you okay if we are tubing them or if we are even replacing them? If it's our rackets, we usually like have replacement grommets with us and stuff. So we talk to the players. Um, it's part of the service, basically, and, and the love for the detail. And, and that, the little things make the difference, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's getting ready to knot off the yes. main strings. On, the, on an 1820, obviously, with four knots, you sometimes run, run shorter on the string. Um, so... And again, being on camera doesn't help necessarily all the time. Yeah. Um, the guy who's stringing right now, Mitch, he's, he's been part of the stringing team now the, the third time here in Indian Wells. Um, overall, we have a very consistent team on board. Um, we have stringers mainly from the US. We have uh, um, two people from Canada um, being here on board. Um, we do have one guy from Germany this year. Um, myself, I have spent various stringing services with different people here in the room at different occasions and tournaments over the past decade or even more so um yeah it's, it's it's a high high quality service that we that we provide here and we see it by increasing numbers from players so what's happening we are up this year at least 15 to 20 percent where are you seeing the most increase in the number of rackets from players um it's interesting so like we were talking about this internally as well and also i was talking here to the team so a lot of stringers in the past have used private stringers and the reason why they have used private stringers was they wanted consistency in their quality and um, since like the um, stringers organization the certification just like grsa and, and whoever is out there um, the stringers have become so much better in terms of the quality and tournaments taking more care of having a high quality string service you have those players who like used to have private stringers. Some of them, they now use the tournament service. And that, that is, that's an increase. And where we also see, and I think that's a very positive development, that in women's tennis, um, players also take care more about having their rackets properly restrung more often, more changes uh, during the changeovers, like ball changes and stuff. So that's actually a very positive development, in my opinion. It will help to prevent injuries. So like that's probably also a message out there to everyone. Like get your rackets restrung more often. It, it will help. It will increase the fun to play the game. It will prevent injuries. So like there are a lot of benefits. Yeah, it's going to make the experience more enjoyable and, uh, and it's better for you. Yes, correct. Dennis, the string that's getting installed right now is head or power. Tell us a little bit about this string. Yeah, so like um, it's it's our latest development. It's the first string that we have manufactured with a partner here in the U.S. It's uh, coming out of a factory in uh, uh, close to Nashville in Tennessee. Um, it has been a project for yeah, we pretty much kicked it off around Indian Wells 2019, where I visited the factory the first time. Uh, we wanted to go slightly different directions with this string, like explore new opportunities. Uh, new manufacturing processes and we felt after investigating and talking that this would be the right partner to achieve what we want to achieve with this string and that's that's how this this string kicked off basically as an addition in our hawk lineup to get like a little bit that more powerful return response slightly more pocketing of the string so i'm pretty confident we have accomplished it and i hope everyone who has tested it so far is happy and can only encourage to get some some demo sets of it. And one thing I like about the strings, I've hit it quite a bit in my Speed Pro, is the sound it makes when the ball comes off the racket. Can you tell us how you know how did you guys achieve that? Yeah, it was a main priority for us actually. So I'm I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. 
Um, because like to me, the sound has a lot of, to do with the perception of a player, how he perceives like the, the racket, how it performs or the string, how it performs, whether it's control, power. And, and we, we put a lot of attention to detail. And obviously like we call it impact modifiers, like it's chemicals that, that get into a string, into the mixture. Uh, also the stretching process, the cooling process of the string plays a big role. So at some point you get to like, like the real detail, detail, detail level um, to, to make it as good as it is today. And we are actually super happy how it, how it perform, performs. And what type of player would you say um, Hawk Power is ideal for? It is, it is definitely, since it is in our Hawk lineup, it's definitely targeted towards the performance player. Um, like the player that is well educated in terms of stroke technique. So you should know how to hit a ball to generate heads, uh, like racket speed, uh, head speed with the racket um, to, to get all the benefits out of that string. But it's not that it's not for like recreational or club level players. It's still like okay for them to play with it because it has a very so softer or slightly softer impact feel. So it's still okay. But like from a target audience, definitely the performance player. Another thing that really stands out with this string is the color. It's a very, you know, it's got a, a great look. Um, what was kind of the inspiration there? So the color is actually the funniest part of this whole string development, because uh, to be honest with you, it was more or less an accident how it come together. So as any manufacturer, you always look for a color that kind of gets you to, uh, yeah, that, that the string gets identified as a head string or as any other comparative string. So <laughs> there are only so many colors out there and like also you need to have the commercial aspect in mind. So you can obviously go completely crazy, but then your commercial success might be not great. So we were looking for something that goes in the direction. We knew that this, this gravity is coming. So I got a little bit inspired of the colors that we use on that gravity. Um, so I, I was thinking to go in this direction and then visiting actually the factory. Like I walked through like the production line saw like a, a bunch of like big spools and the team at the factory would say, oh yeah, don't look at it. Like we're gonna throw this away. It's like a complete accident, wrong color. Like we made a mistake. And I was like, I don't care how this string plays, but I want this color, you know, like this is it. And I was, oh my God, like, how do we get this duplicated? Because they didn't know the mixture anymore. It wasn't based on a Pantone because they made a mistake in the additives. So like it took us three or four months also together with our designers to get close to that, that color code to find a Pantone so that we can constantly duplicate. It. So that, that's the story behind the color actually. But sometimes ha things happen for a reason, right? So we are super happy with it. Mitch is grinding through the, the cross strings. Um, there's also for those who are super interested in, in the stringers world, you talk about the push or the pull of a string doing the cross string. So Mitch is actually pushing the strings through the crosses. If I would be stringing, I would be pulling the strings. So like there is no wrong or right. It's just personal preference, how you work and how you deal with your fingers. Uh, this is actually also the worst part for every stringer and um, to go through the crosses because you need to pay attention that you don't like get any uh, things into the, the string, that it doesn't get burned. Um, so you, you have to pay a lot of attention to it. Like the stringers try to straighten as, as much as they can during the string process, pre-weaving a cross string so you have less friction, which also helps to uh, have like a consistent string bed stiffness. Um, so yeah, and now like on the bottom part of the racket, it's getting even wor worse in a sense because it's getting really tight for your fingers and stuff. And like, you still don't want to have the string to get any wrinkles or anything, so. When I string, I push as well. And then I take that same mentality into my play. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as far as I know, you are playing the perfect setup, right? <laughs> Speed Pro with Hawk Power. Yeah. So like you can push your opponent <laughs> off the court. Easy, easy. Everyone should try that one. So here you can see like what, what, what Mitch is trying to do. He's trying to be like fast in the string, but also taking care of the string itself. So he could obviously be faster, but like that would mean he might damage the string, which then has downsides on the playability. And I know there will be people who might be saying like, oh, it doesn't matter, it's just a string. The string is the engine of the racket, so it's super important. And if you want to have consistent play, you better have it done properly.
Are there certain types of strings where the stringers have to pay more attention during the install? Yes, like specifically like thinner gauges in general, or mono and multifilament. Um, softer strings, they are more sensitive, especially when you pull the knot or when you have like dings in it or any like wrinkles or so, you really have to be careful because they can break, which has nothing to do with the quality of the string necessarily. It's just the, uh, like the attention of the string to really be careful. Obviously natural gut is always something where you are a little bit more careful, but the routine of the stringers, they, they treat every string pretty similar because that's their routine. They are used to it. They feel it in their fingers and, and that makes it also special of those guys. Like, probably by the feel in their fingers, stringers can tell you um, what they are stringing right now and which brand. So that, that's also pretty interesting. Now, like on the on the bottom part of the, the, the racket, Mitch goes like string by string, just, just to uh, like be, be mindful with the string and which is okay on the bottom of the racket. So that doesn't cause any playability downsides or anything. He's stringing on a, on a head stringing machine. Tell us a little bit about it. That's actually the second generation stringing machine we have uh, brought out to the market. Actually, the Indian Wells tournament was the kickoff of the machine. I don't know. That was prior to the time I joined HEAD, where the first time they were used, I think it was 2015 or 16, where we first time did the stringing service here. And since then, we used this tournament as well to gain as much feedback on machines as we can get. So a lot of what this machine does today as a second generation was the experience out of this room from these guys, myself listening to them, watching them, like listening also on the noise of the machine, which is quite important. Because as, as you can imagine, if you are standing in this room for 12 to 14 hours to hear all the noises, it, it can be demanding. And does it have a, you mentioned earlier, some players might request a pre-stretch or something like that. Does this machine yes. provide that? So we, we have um, like five, 10, 15 and 20% because over the, like in the past, most machines did up to 10%. But um, with, uh, with like pre-stretching increasing specifically on natural gut and the game getting faster, we adjusted the machine to be go up to 20%. And we also have like a specific knot function that gets us to um, uh, also to 10 and 20% as well, like as a preset. So you see it can be partly rough on the, on the end. Um, if you need to have the overlaps done outside, everything you need to take care of so it looks clean mm -hmm. as well from the outside of the frame. Now he strung this one as a two-piece, so he's got four knots. Are there any advantages, disadvantages in play or for the stringer going two to four knots? Well, the four knots, most stringers prefer the, the four knots um, because it's, uh, it's partly faster for them to string and you don't have to pull as much string through the frame the entire time. So, but overall, it, it comes down to personal preference and what you kind of feel. So sometimes the, if you, if you like this racket, we could have strung it with two knots as well because it would have been a full poly. The benefit is that you always go the shortest way. Um, so you don't have a lot of overlaps outside of the frame. So the string bed can feel slightly different on court, but it's really the perception of the player. Me personally, I like, if, if possible, and I don't play hybrid, I would string my racket with two knots because it looks cleaner as well, if you look at it. So it's like an aesthetic thing. Um, but yeah, players come in and we actually ask them as well, do you want two or four knots? They, the ones who want uh, two knots, they actually tell you right up front. So what we always take care of as well is all the cross strings get strung from the top to the bottom. So we don't string from the bottom up. Yeah, now with the straightening arm, Mitch is checking the racket uh, to make sure that it, it absolutely looks clean. This one was on a relatively low tension, which actually makes it partly a little bit more difficult to string because you have on the main string a little bit more movement when you pull the crosses. Um, so that's why he was also correcting now the, the mains and now checking on the crosses. It's also a preference of the stringer. Some stringers use the straightening awl, which it doesn't damage the string, even if it looks like it. Um, and other stringers, they prefer to do it by, by hand because they have a better feel with it. You can also see the accuracy like of the knots, for example. Like you, you can't get hurt on the knots or anything can happen. 
So that's really something where the guys always take care of. What, what he does is not only done for camera right now. I think that's very important also to say, like this is done with every single racket that leaves the room. Full accuracy, like all day long. So thanks to Mitch for having done this string drop. Now we are walking off from the machine over to the stenciling area. Dennis, thank you so much for giving us a racket's journey through the string room here in the head stringing room. This one looks beautiful and looks like it's ready for the court. Yes, definitely. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.